Hello everyone and welcome to Heritage Elementary School. My name is Isabella and I'm excited to kick off this keynote. When people here say that we're learning computer science and coding, they usually ask, what is coding? Our answer is that coding is many different languages that computers understand. We get to tell the computer what to do by using block lanes and text-based coding languages and the computer produces output based on what we just coded. When pe as fun as it is to impress people by educating them on what coding is, the real reason we're here today is to talk about a problem. Most general things involve code, but only a small percent of the world actually know how to code. For example, how many of you guys have searched anything on the internet? Probably every single person. How many of you guys could read this code? Would you be surprised to note that this is a code what is used to display the results for Google search for the word school? How about this question? How many of you guys use an automated system like the self-checkout at your grocery store, got money from an ATM, or controlled anything in your home using a remote or smartphone? like the temperature, lights, music, movies, locks, or even your car. Believe it or not, all these systems are similar to the Scratch projects we created in Cycle 1, the Lego Roblox we programmed in Cycle 2, and the Minecraft agents we programmed in Cycle 3. All of these systems run on code. By coding a machine with input to produce a certain output to do things for us is just a type of code we've been practicing. To share more about this, allow me to introduce Giovanni. Thank you, Isabella. The code on top of the screen is from a Lego EV3 robot programmed to sense its environment and stop when drove too close to another object to avoid a collision. The code on the bottom is the code used to program an agent in Minecraft to build one wall of an electronic house with just the stroke of a few keys. We created, named, and ran our own unique codes to, to control our machine and to make our lives easier and more efficient. A lot of people would say these codes are too complex, but the truth is, they're not. These are the coding languages we have been learning this year. These languages use the same fundamental computer science concepts that technology in the world around us uses. How cool is that? Now, I have another question for you. How many of you have changed a light bulb? I'm, I'm guessing the majority of you have. But are we all electricians? Most likely not. You don't need to be an electrician to know how to solve your light bulb problem. The same is true for coding and computer science. You don't need to be a programmer or computer scientist to know how to create, tinker, or change things using technology. The reality is that we are all expected to know something about computing devices like phones, laptops, and tablets. But current researchers say that for every 10,000 people on Earth, only 25 people know anything about code or what makes our devices work. That's a real problem since we're currently in the digital age. We're in the middle of the digital revolution. With coding and computer science becoming bigger and bigger parts of industries like Agriculture, Medicine, Sports, Architecture, Weather, Public Safety, Food Services, Fashion, Arts, Entertainment, Banking, Energy. It's becoming more and more important that us kids learn about computer science and coding so that we are prepared for jobs in the future. But we aren't all going to grow up to be computer programmers, but we will be able to use this knowledge and for jobs we choose. As Bill Gates has said, now is a great time to be entering the coding world because technology is going to change in the next 10 than it has in the last 50. Here at Heritage, we want to be part of this digital revolution and we want to make the world a better place for everyone. This is why, as many of you know, we have been studying computer science in kindergarten. To tell you more about our computer science journey this year, I'd like to introduce my schoolmate, Jeremiah. Thank you, Giovanni. In Cycle 1, we started our computer science journey by learning the fundamentals of computer science through visual block-based programming. Visual block-based programming is useful for people who are new to programming because it is easy to read and use. In Cycle 2, Making and Robotics, we continue to learn the fundamentals of computer science through visual block-based programming, but we extended our learning to include both hardware and software. This hands-on experience with robotics helped to make programming easier to understand. 
By having to control a physical robot and seeing what goes wrong, we learned what robots can and can't do. We also learned about the need for precise instructions. Finally, in cycle 3, our, kinderg our kindergartners and first graders study data. Data is information that is stored and used by a computer. The younger students learned how to use data to create pixel art, store information, and share information. To tell you more about what our second through sixth graders worked on this cycle, here is Giovanni again. For second and third grade, in cycle three, we learned about blocks, mobs, and entities in Minecraft, as well as how special effects are programmed in the game. We used what we learned about special effects in Minecraft to program our own Minecraft effects projects in Scratch. During this, we started to progress from block-based coding to text-based coding. The second, the text-based coding language we used, we started to learn about was Java. Learning Java was not easy, but it was rewarding. We had to pay close attention to things like syntax. Syntax is a set of rules we need to follow when writing code. During this, we started to progress from block-based coding to text-based coding. The text-based coding language we started to program was Java. Learning Java was not easy, but it was rewarding. We had to pay close attention to things like syntax. Syntax is the set of rules we need to follow when writing code. We also need to learn about other important features like text-based coding languages and arguments and commands. In the end, with just a few lines of code, we can make Minecraft sprites move, change color, make sounds, and do anything that we can imagine in code. Our journey from block-based coding to text-based coding did not end there. We had the opportunity to learn about another text-based coding language, JavaScript. To start becoming familiar with JavaScript, in grades four through six, we used the MakeCode app developed by Microsoft. The Make Code app is a very powerful tool that allows you to modify the game Minecraft by running code. We did not spend much time playing Minecraft in a traditional sense. We spent our time coding Minecraft. To code Minecraft, we started by using blocks that were very similar to the ones we used in Scratch. As we became familiar with this new platform, we deepened our computer science knowledge by learning about syntax, variables, and essay loops. Then as we became masters of visual block-based coding, we can instantly convert our code to text and start become familiar with real world text based coding language, JavaScript. Looking at JavaScript can seem over overwhelming at first, but it became more manageable as we observed the code to look for patterns and similarities between the block code and the text code. As we became familiar with this new platform, we deepened our computer science knowledge by learning about syntax variables and nested loops. Then as we became masters of visual block-based coding, we could instantly convert our text code and start to become familiar with the real-world text-based coding language, JavaScript. Looking at JavaScript can seem over overwhelming at first, but it became more manageable as we observed the code to look for patterns and similarities between the block code and the text code. So now you might be thinking, wow, these students are learning some pretty amazing things. But aren't these robots and virtual agents going to take all of our children's jobs? What will they do for work? That's a great question. It is predicted that almost 50% of all jobs will fall victim to robots within just a few decades because of advances in things like artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, also called AI, makes it possible for machines to learn from experience, adjust to do inputs, and perform human-like tasks. In addition to being able to be working alongside with robots and virtual agents, we are going to see an increased demand for people with strong social and interpersonal skills, who are nurturing, caring, persuasive, have great negotiating skills, and are good at selling. These are exactly the soft skills that we get to practice in our classrooms when we are learning about coding and computer science. Through our work with computers, Legos, and lots of different software platforms, we have also been developing our confidence, patience, problem solving, collaboration, focus, and communication, all of which will be required when we enter the workforce of the future. So to sum things up, we have been learning lots about the technical parts of coding and computer science, as well as the soft skills that will help us find or create jobs that are robot proof. And we are really happy about that. Our futures are looking very bright. Speaking of the future, we need to get back to class to keep preparing for it. 
so just in a few minutes we're going to let you go. We hope you enjoy your times in classrooms later as you explore some of the coding projects we have been working on for the past few months. We are glad to have you here to support us as we code to the future. After you leave here today, be sure to tell everyone you see not to worry about the future because here at Heritage, we are practicing all the skills that will help us make the world a place where... Awesome is the new normal!